Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's see what the state matrix looks like when we do this in three dimensions, the X, the Y, and Z dimension. Now we end up with a six by six A matrix. We have a state matrix where we have the X position, the Y position, the Z position, and the velocity in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. Here we have our B matrix, which allows us to convert the what we call control variables, in this case the acceleration in the X direction, the acceleration in the Y direction, the acceleration in the Z direction, and allows us to, to convert that into a format so we have it in a, into a matrix, a six by one matrix, that will include the X and the Y and Z directions and the velocities in the X and Y and the Z directions. Let's go ahead and do the multiplication, see what we get. This is equal to, from the first multiplication, we end up with an x position. Now, I didn't use the subscript, but this would be the current, uh, what we call current state matrix, and this is the previous state matrix, so this would be the k minus 1 case, and the acceleration, we assume that that's part of the model that doesn't change, but this is what we call the position and the velocities in the three dimensions from the previous state, a delta t ago, and now we're calculating the current state. So we get the previous state, that would be x in the k minus 1 uh, time frame, multiplied times 1, and then we multiply, then we add to that the velocity in the x direction, that's the velocity, times the delta t. We do that for the y direction, we get y from the previous state plus the velocity in the y direction times the delta t and we get the position in the previous state plus the velocity from the previous state times the delta t. So this is the adjustment for the position from the previous state to the current state due to velocities in the three directions. Now we also want to put down the x, y, and z velocities. Notice that we only multiply this times a 1, so here we get an x velocity, a y velocity, and a z velocity not changed because we have nothing in this matrix to cause it to change it. The change in the velocity will come from the acceleration from the control variables. The second matrix, from the second multiplication, we get this multiplied times a sub x. We get a sub x times one-half delta t squared. We get like this, then we get the second one, that is a sub y times one-half delta t squared, and we get a sub z times one-half delta t squared. Then the adjustments for the velocity comes from multiplying these times the three control variables. We get a sub x times delta t. We get a sub y times delta t, and finally a sub z times delta t. This matrix here adjusts for the acceleration, both in terms of position and in terms of velocity. When we add the two together, we get the following. We get the position from the previous state. Add to that the adjustment because of the velocity, and we presume that would also be the velocity from the previous state times delta t, and we add to that the change due to the acceleration, a sub x times one-half delta t squared. For the y direction, plus the adjustments for the velocity in the y direction, plus the adjustment for the acceleration in the y direction. For the z direction, plus the velocity for the velocity, plus the adjustment for the velocity in the z direction, plus the adjustment for the acceleration in the z direction. So now we have the three, the three uh, positions in the x direction, the y direction, z direction. Now that's for the current state calculated from the previous state. Now we have to do the same for the velocities. We get the velocity in the x direction adjusted for because of the acceleration in the x direction. We have the velocity in the y direction adjusted for because of the acceleration in the y direction and we have the velocity in the z direction adjusted for due to the acceleration in the z direction. Notice we do end up with a 6 by 1 matrix. Doesn't look like a 6 by 1 matrix, but this is one element. There's just three terms added together into one single element. Three terms together added into one single element. Here there's two terms added together into one single element. So what this now gives us, this gives us the new positions in the x, the y, and the z direction for the current state, 
and the new velocities in the x and the y and the z direction for the current state. Again, we did not yet include any noise factor here. We'll do that later. We just want to get, just want to be sure that we understand how we go from the previous state to the current state using what we call the state matrix. And this is done here in three dimensions. Now in the next video we'll show you a numerical example to see how we actually calculate that through a series of steps. Once you see that, you really be, will begin to make sense. At least we'll have that part of the Kalman filter under control. There's many more matrices we have to go through, but then we'll have many more videos to show you. So systematically we'll go through the entire process in such a way that we have a complete picture, a clear picture of how to do Kalman filtering in two, three, four, five, however many dimensions you may want to use it for. Typically two or three dimensions is the norm. And that's how we do that.